Now, something that we have to always accept is the fact that even though we pay attention in our live classes here and we may even watch our instant replay of the class and we, we do all the great resources that we have for you here at stormwind.com, you get in there in production and things just aren't working. Yeah, let's always consistently as we move throughout this intrusion prevention course, let's make sure that we look at troubleshooting for the various topics that we are discussing and initialization of the sensor is certainly gonna be one of those that we take a look at. So let's go ahead and take a look at the tools, first of all, that you would possess when it comes to troubleshooting your sensor management accessibility. Remember, from a workstation out there, you know, from your Windows box, you're going to be able to take advantage of tools like Ping and Traceroute and Telnet and Secure Shell and Secure HTTP in order to help you test the reachability to the management interface on the intrusion prevention sensor. And then on the intrusion prevention sensor itself, it's not like we're without tools. From the console, yeah, at the command line, we can issue ping, we can issue trace route, we can do our show interfaces, and remember, if we think things are really messed up with the bootstrapping of the sensor, we can go ahead and initiate that setup script to guide us through properly configuring the particular device for our network and for the management access that we're gonna need with that device. Now, as far as a specific troubleshooting flow for you goes, we definitely have one. Watch this. And this is a lengthy one because a lot could go wrong when you decide to Telnet or SSH to the command line on the device and you can't. All right, here's what you would do. You'd go to the sensor itself and log in via the console or if you're dealing with a piece of hardware that's installed in another piece of your Cisco hardware, you'd go and you'd utilize the session command. Okay, so you'd do a session into that device. The next thing you would do is you would ensure that the management interface that you're trying to reach is enabled. Yeah, sure. You'd go in and you'd run a show interfaces to make sure the management interface is indeed enabled. Obviously, if it's not, then go and make sure that you up that management interface. Make sure you enable it. If the management interface is enabled, make sure your sensor has a unique IP address. You could obviously make sure of this with the setup script that you could run. Uh, and obviously, if you want to change the IP address directly, you could at the sensor command line. Next, is the management port connected? Yeah, are you sure that you physically connected it? The show interfaces can confirm this. Moving along in our troubleshooting flow, if we need to, we then check to make sure that the workstation is permitted by the ACL that you create on the sensor restricting who can access the sensor from a management perspective. Remember, this is typically done through the setup routine. So, yeah, we have this nice access control list that limits who can access the device from a manageability perspective and obviously, we got to pick that up in our troubleshooting flow here. We got to make sure the workstation that is having problems getting to the sensor for the management is permitted by that ACL. Obviously, if it isn't, we need to add the appropriate statement. If that ACL checks out, then we go and make sure that the network allows connectivity to the sensor. In other words, maybe there's a firewall in between the management workstation and the intrusion prevention system and that is what is causing us issues. So a wonderful troubleshooting flow that we can follow for the intrusion prevention system to make sure we can 
access it just fine for management purposes. By the way, don't forget, like we said earlier, from the sensor itself, we can issue a ping. Here you see we're doing a ping from the sensor with a particular repeat count as part of our troubleshooting. We could go ahead and do a trace route from the sensor. Here you can see we are taking a look at a trace route result to a particular device that is out there on the network. Remember, one of the commands that we referenced in that troubleshooting flow was to go ahead and do a show interface. The show interface command would allow us to make sure that the sensor management interface is up and healthy and completely operational. IP address conflicts, of course, are going to prevent the sensor interface from coming up. The management interface won't come up if it detects that its IP address conflicts with another on the network. So this is something that we want to confirm with the show interface command and then potentially reset it running the appropriate setup script. If needed, remember, we may need to go in and take a look at the access control list and make sure that the ACL on the sensor controlling the management access permits the particular workstation that we're having trouble with. As you know, this could be done through the setup script or, obviously, all of these commands can be issued at the command line. We go into service host, network settings, and we add the appropriate access list entry for that workstation that is having issues. Remember, always double check that the network itself allows the connectivity from the management workstation to the sensor. And obviously, one of the big areas of trouble is a firewall that might be blocking this traffic. Also, you might have network address translation going on on your firewall, and this might change the workstation's IP address and maybe your access control list doesn't permit that translated address. So that's something to watch out for as well. Now, what if you're having an entirely different problem with your sensor? You can get to your sensor from a management perspective. Yeah, that's just fine. But what you discover is your sensor isn't allowing through traffic. It's stopping everything. It's in the inline mode and it's stopping everything. Not just the uh, bad malicious traffic, but it's just absolutely black holing everything. Well, first of all, obviously we realize the interface pair has to be enabled, right? And the interfaces on the neighboring devices have to be enabled and healthy. Yeah, so obviously we gotta make sure we constructed the inline pair correctly and that these interfaces are up and then of course the interfaces that connect on in this case the routers need to be in the appropriate up up status so our troubleshooting flow here no surprise we log into the sensor and we make sure the interfaces are enabled and then we make sure the inline interface pair is properly configured and then hopefully we go ahead and we ping right through the sensor once we confirm these necessary statuses and these necessary configurations. Here you can see we've gone into the IDM and we've fixed a situation where the interfaces aren't enabled. Yeah, or we at least confirm it. We go interfaces, we go to the interfaces node and we see, uh-oh, every single one of our interfaces are not enabled, no wonder why we're not passing any traffic. Or perhaps we need to confirm that our interface pair or VLAN pair or VLAN inline group is configured correctly. Here you can see we've gone to interfaces, we've gone to interface pairs, and we discover there is no interface pair configured at all. During the initial installation of our sensor, sometimes we might have to troubleshoot 
what we'd call hardware issues, oftentimes these come down to interface issues. Yeah, particularly the interface hardware. Yeah, the serial console, for instance. So one of the things that we need to do here is make sure cables are properly seated, make sure those cables aren't damaged, make sure our interconnect indicators are illuminated, make sure interface statuses are up. Yeah, obviously you've got a lot of experience with this, I'm sure, outside of the realm of security with your devices. You know, you're used to going in, unplugging the particular cable, and then replugging it back in, making sure it's properly connected, and then checking the appropriate LED indicators. And boy, oh boy, I just absolutely love our graphics department. You gotta love it. Yeah, so, you know, checking cables. I don't want to insult you with this, but it's... Cisco wants us to remind you, of course, you know, check connectors, bent pins, make sure no damage, properly crimped. And then once you've checked that physical layer and everything checks out, well, you have to start looking at configuration issues at that point because now you know your physical layer is just fine. Now, careful with this one, but obviously there is a way to restore the intrusion prevention device to its default settings. You can do this from the command line and you could also do it from the graphical user interface. Now why I just chuckled is because if you do it from the graphical user interface, you're absolutely gonna get disconnected. Yeah, of course. You're gonna immediately lose connectivity to the sensor. Yep, so just be aware of that. So notice we went to the sensor management drawer and in all, look at all of these things that are in sensor management. Wow, so many nodes. And here we go, restore defaults and we check that restore defaults button over there on the right and bang, we lose our connectivity to the device. When you restore the default values like this, you reset the IP address, the net mask, the default gateway, and the management ACL configuration. Please note the password on the device and the time on the device are not reset. So just keep that in mind. All right, and we'll talk about password resets uh, later on in case you're wondering, and we'll also talk about resetting the time or setting the time appropriately on your device a little later on as well.